over to something a little bit different as our church is transitioning. We're starting a new brand new series today entitled Uncomfortable. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I know, really, I know. The awkward and essential challenge of Christian community. Everybody say uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to start something new today. I can see you're already frustrated with me. It's okay. Uncomfortable. This one will be easy, I promise. Uh, the first one's always the easiest. It's the next couple that get tough. <laughs> Uncomfortable. So I'm just setting up the series today, so don't, don't be afraid. Don't be worried. This will be easy. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Uh, my wife and I uh, recently had to purchase some new living room furniture. I stress the word had to. <laughs> it had gotten past okay. Fellas, you know, once you find a piece of furniture that works, you, 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 are, not, you are not desiring of anything else. I don't care how many pieces are falling off. I don't care of how many different shades of color that piece of furniture is now. You are okay because you have found something that is what? comfortable. You broke it in. You got a special spot. You got a spot. I know I had a spot in my chair, my, my, my recliner that, that actually fit perfectly in my house, directly in front of our, our television. It worked with the earth's centripetal force. That all things work perfectly when I sat in that chair, but, but unfortunately, y'all, seasons change. And uh, my wife was no longer content with what we were had. And she said to me, baby, we have to. I said, have to? Can't we just be content with what we got? No, 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 no. We have to get some new furniture. So we go off furniture shopping, furniture shopping, furniture shopping. Y'all, can I tell you what? I I don't like shopping uh, for anything with anyone, to be honest with you. I love my wife, but I don't want to shop with her, praise God. You know, uh, and that's come back to haunt me a couple times. Uh, (laughs) But we go to the furniture store, and for some reason, we had the bright idea of taking our children with us, which was, was not wise at all. Uh, we were like, hey, we'll just go eat and then stop by here real quick. And next thing you know, we're, 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 we're testing out furniture. And what are we testing out? We're testing out for one thing, mainly for comfort. That, that's what I was testing out. My wife was looking at other things like colors, as if those things actually matter. Me, I had one assignment. How comfortable is it? Does it have enough depth in the chair? Enough height? I want to lay my my head back. You know, I had all these things out. Comfort was my focus. And it's interesting to me because this is how we live our life, looking for comfort. So we went from chair to chair, couch to couch. The little salesman kept walking by us and said, hey, man, keep going. Leave us when I want to buy something, I'll let you know. You're going to ask me. My children jumped on everything as if we had already purchased it. They liked every chair, but me, I needed the right comfort. And unfortunately, this is how we live our life in almost every area of our life. We're always looking for comfort. But what's challenging is, is that our walk with Christ is not a walk of comfort. As we'll find today that we're actually called to be a little uncomfortable. Even here at our church, there's a call for it to be a little uncomfortable. But yet we go looking for comfort. We, we're trying to see if it fits us. You ever tried out a chair? Let's try the chair. Let's try the chair there. Come on, Ivan, let's see. Try the chair. Hey, pick one. There you go. That's it. That's, you got a chair that you can put together. And we, we try it for, for what? For comfort. <sighs> you know what you start doing when you sit in the chair? You start realizing, like, how long can I do this? Y'all ain't going to have me preach this morning. Because there's some stuff in our walk with Christ. We, we, we try it and we say, well, how long can I? (laughs) 
They want me to do life with other people. It's uncomfortable to share my life. So you know what we do? We, some of us shop for churches this way. We go to a church and see if it's... Do they have everything that I want? I want it to fit me. And you look at it. And you, you know, that's what, you, that's what we do after you sit in something. You go back and you look at it. You just said it in it. And you, Looking at it ain't going to tell you how it feels. Oh, y'all missed what I just said. I said, looking at it is not going to tell you. So you know what you say? Let me get another chair. Let me get another chair, brother. Let me, let me try something else. Yeah, God bless you. Oh, we dressed up like today. You all right. You was in the spirit today. I mean, is your wife here today? Okay, yes. I figured you dressed yourself today, son. <laughs> get you another chair. Yeah, all right. Armrest. It's all right, right here. You try your chair out. What you do when you get a chair? You try some of your, your favorite positions. Yeah. Because what are you trying to find? Comfort. Is this not our focus with everything that we do? What's most comfortable? We don't want to do things that takes us out of our comfort zone. If you're like me, I used to be built for speed. Now I'm built for comfort. <laughs> you know why I'm built for comfort? Because I like eating comfort food. <laughs> we, we look for And some of us struggle with our walk with Christ because it's not comfortable. I wish this chair did a little more. I can get what I want out of this. I have to give me another chair, brother. This, this ain't it. This, this ain't it right here. Give me, give me one more. Look, oh, you got you some help. All right. Please. Look at Chris. You doing? Okay. Get it. I got you, son. <laughs> don't, don't, don't hurt yourself, Reverend. All right. Here we go. Let's try. Uh oh, uh oh, come here. Okay, this is all right right here. It's a little more comfortable. Hey, Brian, it's got a mesh back so it breathes. Y'all don't, don't want y'all chair to breathe a little bit so you don't get sweaty back? Okay, y'all gotta talk to y'all, y'all. Got a little, little, does it do so? Uh oh. It adjusts, watch this, to what I want. All right. It's comfortable. What, what are you doing in life? What are you looking for in life that fits you? Challenge with your walk with Christ been because God asks you to do things that are uncomfortable. Maybe, maybe not y'all, but probably me. The stuff I'm disobedient with is just really the stuff I'm uncomfortable doing. Maybe some of us today, and I'm going to focus on our church even as we celebrate five years, maybe there's some things here at the church that you're content with just coming on Sunday morning because that's really all the comfort you have. I'm only comfortable with that. I don't want to do anymore. I don't want to engage anymore. And I'm here to tell you today that the church is on a call to comfort. The church is not, listen to me, I know this is tough, the church is not designed to make you comfortable. Here's really our big idea today. We're going to look at 1 Peter in just a minute. But here it is. The church is not for our comfort, but here's for Christ's commission. And as we talk about this series over the next few weeks about what's comfortable, I want you for a moment to take out of your mind, take out of your heart, this idea that I need to find what best fits me. If you're going to be a part of Vertical Church, if, if you haven't been with us the last five years, but you intend to be with us the next five years, here's what I want you to get used to, being uncomfortable. I believe if we are a church that's on mission 
if we are church helping people believe, belong, and become, it means we are going to be uncomfortable. And here it is. That if you're going to do that, you've got to be committed to what Christ calls us to do. And that's, the, that's the great commission. Are y'all with me? Let, let's go... Let's go to 1 Peter chapter number 2, verses 1 through 5. 1 Peter chapter number 2, verse 1 through 5. Because I want us, I want us to understand that we are called, and this is really the title of my sermon today, to an uncomfortable church. An uncomfortable church. I know. I know you're like, well, no, I wanted, I wanted the perfect church. I wanted, I know some of y'all came here because it was small. I know some of y'all came because it was multi-ethnic. I know some of you came because it was close. <laughs> but those things should not be the reason why you're here. Those things should not even be the motivating factors for attendance or participation. No, the commission, the great commission of Christ should be our number one focus as a church. And I, I want to go ahead and tell you this because just in case you're wondering, I'm not here to make you comfortable. No one wants to eat nothing, just, I, I'm not your flight attendant. It's a way to free myself of that. I did that the first couple of years. I tried to make everybody happy. We a church planner, people come. You don't want to leave. We started with eight. And I was like, Lord, hey, anybody come to stay, please. Whatever you want me to do, stay. <laughs> the Lord told me, that's not your job. I said, oh, my bad, Lord. It would make me more comfortable. You hear me? I, I want us to see how dangerous comfort can be when it comes to our Christian walk. Because so, of, so much of us sacrifice a beautiful relationship with Christ because we avoid discomfort. And we're not, a, we're not willing to embrace it. So let's look at 1 Peter chapter number 2 here. As Peter writes, after he's talking about this unity in the church and how we're called to be together in, in this beautiful picture. He says, so put away all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy and envy, and all slander. So how we are... Not just who we are, but how we work with one another. But put away these old things. And like newborn infants, this should be our desire. Like newborn infants, long for pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. And if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious. Focus in right here, verse 5. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. We've talked about this before in a series we did called Rethink Church. We talked about uh, the different uh, descriptions of the church or the body of Christ. And one of those is a temple or a house for God. As a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. This is what God has called us to do. And nothing in here calls us to be comfortable. Matter of fact, when I was looking at this and I'm looking at stones and I'm looking at, at, at stones that are made into a temple or a building, nothing about being a brick into a building is about comfort. It's more about purpose. My grandfather was a brick mason. He was a brick mason, and one of the things that, that he was just really good with was building. Not one time did I ever see my papa pick up a brick and say, hey, would you like to be right here? No, no, no. Not one time did he ever say, how does that feel? Are you okay? Not one time did he ask the other bricks in the wall, hey, are you okay with this one brick being here? No, because it wasn't about comfort. It was always about purpose. And here, church, I, I want to let you know as we're moving forward, as we're preparing for 2019, I'm here to let you know it's about to get real uncomfortable. Pastor, this is not a five-year celebration. Oh, oh, it is. 
Because I'm preaching about fulfilling the mission of Christ. And if fulfilling the mission of Christ means I'm uncomfortable, so be it. It means I may be a part of an uncomfortable church. It may mean I have to have some uncomfortable relation. I may have to deal with some uncomfortable people. I may have to do some uncomfortable things. But that's what he's building us up to do. We cannot sacrifice the, the, the mission of God on the altar of our comfort. So here it is, our first point. So I'm going to give you two things today. I'm going to get out of here. Two things today that you need to understand about our church and what it means for us to be uncomfortable. Everybody say uncomfortable. uncomfortable. I should have got some old school church pews to preach this sermon so y'all can really feel what this means. <laughs> See, y'all too comfortable right where you are. You don't even want to say it. If you ain't never said in the church pew... Three hour services. We out of here in an hour and a half. Y'all like, man, it took us for it. Yeah. Uncomfortable. <laughs> it's not going to be today. Don't worry. I got a 10th inning. Number one, tell me somebody said amen. Y'all ain't said amen the whole service. It was, you ain't said nothing all day. But amen, Pastor. You got, I, got that, I, got a, I got a brunch to be to. <laughs> Number one, write this down if you can. We pursue partner and proclaim at the expense of our preference. That's what we're called to do. Hear me, church. Vertical church, we will pursue, partner, and proclaim at the expense of preference. When Jesus Christ died on the cross and we were saved, for those of us that believe, we are now a part of this temple, and we are built up together. That's what Peter says. We are being built up together. He is the chief cornerstone. If you keep reading in First Peter chapter number two, we'll see where it proclaims that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And now we are stones together. So the moment you come to Christ, your preferences should be laid down and picked up as the cross. I know this is tough, but hear me. You got to lay down your preferences. Uh, I, I get the opportunity when I travel to fly Delta. Uh -huh. Fly Delta. My wife and I fly Delta. I like Delta. They always got the Biscoff cookies. My personal preference. <laughs> it is comfortable. I always ask for two just in case they... No, I can't have two? Okay, sure. Just cranberry juice and cookies. Thank you. Uh, but one of the things I always try to get my wife, you know, getting tickets and, you know, booking flights, I say, hey, can, can you get us into uh, the, the comfort, comfort area? I, I can't afford first class. <laughs> but I can pay the extra $15 for the, the, uh, the plush headrest. Um, just a little more leg room, praise God. Because it's, it's, it's comfort, it's preference. And so there have been times where, you know, I was like, man, you don't have comfort available. They're all sold out. <sighs> Let's check another flight. Y'all see, y'all not going to talk to me. Man, you mean they don't have exactly what I want? Watch this. That, that sometimes I question on going to my destination if I can't go there in comfort. Hear what I'm saying? And see, sometimes we come to God. Sometimes we come to the Bible. Sometimes we come to the church. Sometimes we come to biblical community with our preferences. And God, if you cannot meet my accommodations, I won't pursue the mission. What are you sacrificing on the altar of your comfort and your preferences? Paul, pa Peter paints this beautiful picture that we are being built up together, that we were stones rejected by men but accepted by Christ. He actually paints this picture of regeneration. We are new because of Christ, and we are the living stones 
He points back to the Old Testament temple that was made of brick and mortar, but no, Christ says no. Now the spirit doesn't reside in a building. It resides in us that are living stones. But when you are a brick, when you are a stone, you're saying, I am submitted to the builder. Wherever you want to place me, however you want to use me, comfortable or uncomfortable, God, I'm willing. Hear me, church. And if you're going to be a part of what Vertical Church is doing, you have to embrace this idea, hear me, that I'm uncomfortable. And it's okay. Here it is. We pursue, partner, and proclaim at the expense of preference. Write this down if you can. We pursue God to know him. We partner in biblical community to know and be known by others of him. And then we proclaim the gospel to make him known. That's it. That's it. Pursue God. Constantly wanted to know God, to be transformed in his presence. I want to know him. We want to partner in biblical community to know him. I mean, excuse me, to know and be known by others of him. Other believers, other followers of Jesus Christ, we should know them and we should be known by them. Hear me, there's a difference. Not just know of them. I'll put it down for a second. I got a few minutes. See, a lot of us know of each other, but we don't know each other. See, I know this because some of y'all come to me, Pastor, what happened to such and such? I said, we don't have a such and such that attends our church. I haven't seen it in our church community builder uh, database. <laughs> you know, I don't. <laughs> Sits right over there. With the hair, you know, with the hair. Please stop before this gets bad. <laughs> See, we know of each other, but let's be honest, sometimes it's uncomfortable to have to know each other. Sometimes it's uncomfortable to make ourselves known. And we are called as a church. I pray that our church is uncomfortable for some of you. Yeah, I know. I know he's like, well, why would you want that? Because I believe that's where you have to lean into God, in your areas of discomfort. See, because oftentimes it's uncomfortable for our flesh, and that's often what we follow. Can I tell you the truth? Like, sometimes that's what's tough for me. I was in my discipleship group this week, uh, just the other night, and we were talking about uh, some of our prayers this week, we're praying coming up. One of our goals between uh, uh, this week and the next time we meet is and bring a list of five people uh, uh, that we know don't know Jesus. And we're going to spend next week praying over the names of the unsafe people that are in our life. And this was crazy. In our group, uh, the guys was like, uh, do I know five people? <laughs> if I ask you to name five people right now that you know don't know Jesus, you might be like, uh, what is her name? And we talked about, well, man, we got to have that conversation. Our next little goal is, like, to know all of our neighbors on our street. And I confessed to my guy, I was like, you know, I don't even, like, I just met my neighbor, neighbor. Like, I know some of the people on my street, but the guy that stays right beside me, they bring us Christmas cookies every year. We don't ever eat any of them. <laughs> and I was like, I cannot think of dude's name. I'm just being honest. Y'all know I'll be transparent about this. So he said, listen, listen, listen to me. And so I remember, I was like, okay, I'm going to go talk to him. I was like, but what am I going to say? <laughs> what am I going to say? This is what's funny. So I can get up and talk in front of anybody. I've got over thousands of people and just go, oh, no, 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 no. But I had a hard time, like, going next door. I was like, hey, what's up, man? Want to, want to come over? <laughs> oh, I don't know for what. I just figured we'd start somewhere. It was, it, was, it was weird. It was uncomfortable. This is the same guy I had some challenges because he kept putting his leaves in my yard, and I wanted to tell him a few other things, but... <laughs> I 
supposed to be the Christian pastor on the street. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. But here it is. It's also the thing God has called me to do. I want you to see how sometimes if you're often avoiding the uncomfortable, you will often avoid God's call on your life. If you're waiting for comfort, you're going to miss what God has called you to do. If you're here searching for a church, if you're looking for a perfect church, you're not going to find one. And if you find one, when you get there, it probably won't be perfect no more. <laughs> it ain't for all y'all, but some of y'all. You know who you are. <laughs> here it is. Church, we're called to pursue God. Are you hearing me? Pursue biblical community. And make a note. Proclaim the gospel. I, I want to let you know something. All three of those things will make you uncomfortable. It will be uncomfortable to your flesh. It will be uncomfortable who you were before Christ. It will be uncomfortable. How many of y'all can say it's uncomfortable to sit in silence and solitude for 20 minutes? Some of y'all just weird, just like, Okay, I'm supposed to pray to God, but um, I got a bill due, and I turn off the oven, did I unplug the iron? That's how we turn off the iron. We don't press a button, we unplug it. You start, it's uncomfortable. Sometimes for some of us, silence and solitude is uncomfortable. Knowing others is uncomfortable. Sometimes proclaiming the gospel, sharing the good news, and I don't know enough, I'm not there yet. It's uncomfortable. Write this down if you can. It's the things that challenge us that are often the things that change us. I'll say it again. It's the things that challenge us that are often the things that actually change us. See, it's the discomfort, listen to me, that often leads to your development. Comfort. Our purpose is to know God, to know and be known by others of God, and to make him known. That should be what drives us in every single way, not our level of comfort. We can't go through life like we treat chairs and couches and shoes. Let me try another one. We can't go through the scriptures and the Bible until we find one that's comfortable for us. We can't go through people in our church until we find, well, this, I'm comfortable. No. This discomfort often leads to our development. Well, pastor, what is comfort? What do you mean by comfort? Um, comfort is like sand on a beach. You're pursuing comfort. You're pursuing sand on the beach. When you walk on sand on the beach, it conforms to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Instead of you conforming to it. I love this. Jesus says he is the rock. I don't care what you do. If you step on a rock, it does not conform to you. If you stand on it long enough, you will conform. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is, what, this is what our relationship with God should look like. It should not look like we're looking for a sandbox. God, help me find a church that will conform to me. No, 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 Lord, help me find a church that will help me conform to you. Comfort is always looking for something to conform to what you feel and know and think and believe. Mm -hmm. Discomfort, being uncomfortable, means, I know it's going to be tough for some of y'all, that you have to make an adjustment. Oh, man. I have to change. I have to share. My wife knows if I get on an airplane, do not put me in the middle seat. Because there is a coveted thing there that you don't want to share with no one. That armrest <laughs> has to be for somebody. And if I'm sitting there, it's not for you. <laughs> See, this discomfort, it's not all a bad thing. 
let's, let's, let's look at it right here. This is what our call is. When we call to be together, we're called uh, to be stones in his temple, living stones. Right here, let's keep reading in first, uh, verse number 9 and 11. We actually see our purpose right here as a church, right here. Verse 9, but you are a chosen race. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may what? Proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. We are part of his temple, his tabernacle, the church, the big C church, the universal church. We are part of his people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners, as exiles. Listen, remember, we we don't belong here. We're, We're here temporarily. Our citizenship is in the kingdom of God. Heaven is our home. It says here, I urge you, sojourners and exiles, to abstain from the passions of the flesh. Which wage war against your soul? Let me say it another way. The passion or the, 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 the desire, the things that make you feel good in your flesh, the things that make you most comfortable, war against your soul. Here it is. So that means I cannot avoid discomfort for the cause of Christ. I can't come to church and say it sure would be nice if they did what I wanted them to do. I heard so many times people come to me, Pastor, uh, at my last church, I mean my first year pastor here, at my last church, we used to do this. And we used to do that. I said, maybe you should go back to your last church. (laughs) Well, I'm looking for comfort. This is what I really want. My preference is a priority to me. a new living stone for Christ. We are a royal priesthood. We have responsibility. A priesthood. That word priest simply means to be a bridge builder. I don't know if you can tell, but that's a work word. (laughs) See, every stone in the wall in the temple has responsibility. Imagine if you have your brick house and bricks just decided to start falling on the ground. I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of this. It's too much work. I got to hold other people up around me. Oh, my God. I got to be connected to somebody else. I don't want to do this. I'd rather be a stone by myself. You know what? A stone never is a temple. He's not looking for a stone. He's looking for a temple, a tent, like a house. He's building us together. What happens in the church where you decide, I don't want to be a stone? I don't want to be together. I want to come here and get my little stuff. Perfectly, pastor will say something to encourage me. I want to hear I want a lady April sing her songs, make me feel good. Hopefully, she'll sing the song that was on the radio the other day because that's my jam. I really would love that. That song take me in every time. You, you're looking for a chair that's comfortable. I don't care what she thinks. I've come here to worship God. I don't care if they have the type of services or the ministries or the events that I want. No, no, I didn't come here for that. I came here to complete the mission. The church is not about our comfort. About this commission, point number two. We're going, here it is, last one. We embrace the discomfort temporarily to be with Christ eternally. It's discomfort temporarily. It's discomfort temporarily. It's, it's, It's discomfort temporarily. We talked about this in the last sermon series. This, this, is, this is temporary. This is, this is not forever. Right here in verse 5, so you yourselves 
like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. These sacrifices, that's discomfort sometimes. To give up something that you want, that's, that's not comfortable always. If you're a parent, you get it. My children ask for my food all the time. We went to the movies last night. Took my babies to go see the Grinch. We're sitting there, and my little girl had the nerve to ask for my bottle of water. Now, here's the problem with drinking water after babies. Now, we got her a strawberry juice as she requested. I don't want juice. I want water. I'm going to drink your nasty germs. <laughs> Here it is. And now I got to deal with a little discomfort for a movie she want to see. It's her water now, right? <laughs> yeah, I know my water. But here it is, church. Listen, it's temporary. See, this is the thing. You, you got to make sure that you keep things in perspective. It can't be about you. It's temporary. See, our perspective is so self-serving and so self-focused. I was telling my wife on the way here about a, a quote by Muhammad Ali. He says, we have to change our perspective because he said, why is it that we say that the deer crosses the road? When actually the road is crossing the forest. We're saying the deer crossing our path. Maybe your path is crossing the forest. Because it's about us. See, as a Christian, I don't want you all to build your activities, build church around the other activities, build your faith around your other activities in life. Because that's what we do oftentimes. We treat church and and the gospel and the biblical community as an extracurricular activity. But as a Christian... As kingdom citizens, our walk with Christ should be primary. Our walk with Christ should be primary. I'm going to say it again. That that it's not just the mission of the church to to know God, to, to know and be known by others of God, and to make him know. That's my life. Everything else is extracurricular to Christ. Well, Pastor, you know I can't do this because I got this going on. No, Pastor, I can't. I really can't commit to a group because I got this going on. Okay, what's, what's most important? We're talking about the work of the kingdom. Let's look at John chapter number 12, verse 25, our last scripture here. We're going home. Pastor, I thought we were coming to celebrate five years. We are. By helping you understand what it's going to be like for the next five years uncomfortable. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Read again. Whoever loves his life loses it. Jesus here is talking about what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus Christ. It's not comfortable, church. It's not easy. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Church, I I want you to hear me say this very quickly. That our goal and our desire is to lose our life. He's not saying you hate yourself and you hate everything. But compared to your love for Christ... Compared to how you care for your own life, it should look like, man, he must hate his life. And that person that treats this world, this temporary thing in this world will keep it for eternal life. If you want to follow Jesus Christ, you have to hate this life. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable temporarily. To be with Christ eternally. 
And over the next few weeks, I, I want to challenge you to a life that's uncomfortable. Discomfort has often been the calling card for Christianity. If you're looking for a religion that's easy, Christianity is not the one for you. If you're looking for something for comfortable, that's going to be plush, you know, this, this isn't. No, it's, it's a call to some uncomfortable situations. Can I tell you all, in, in the first five years of our church, there have been plenty of uncomfortable moments. I've had to have some uncomfortable conversations. I had to hear some uncomfortable things. Comfort has never been a part of the plan. And sometimes we pursue what's comfortable because we say comfort and ease go hand in hand. Can I tell you something? Jesus did not pursue comfort. As he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, Lord, take this cup from me. As he sweat, blood came from his breath. Was it comfortable? Next Sunday, we'll talk about an uncomfortable cross. Because we all have an uncomfortable cross to bear. This is what it means to be a part of Christian community. 